What's up bros, welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over how to start a DJ business and more specifically how I started a DJ business and what that looks like for you to start your own DJ business. All right, so first off, let's qualify like, where I'm at and where I've been with my business. So technically, this is the third year as Red Tie Entertainment. Um, really, it's been four, but that first year was really just like not doing a lot of shows, nothing really went on. And then three years ago is when I actually officially reserved the name Red Tie Entertainment. All right, so let's go back to when it all started about 10 years ago, 2009, 2010 or 11. Um, I was interested in music and DJing and really like festivals and club music and I really love that stuff. So what I ended up doing is I went out and bought a laptop and a mixer, a little Gemini mixer. It was maybe $150. Computer I bought because it was 18 months of financing. And then a little fun fact about my story of how I got started. I don't recommend this to people, but what I did, I would throw things on a credit card. Uh, I didn't really know how credit worked at this time, and I would end up just paying it off over like a year. So I would end up paying interest. Don't recommend that, but that's just how my story started. I just started practicing. I started watching videos like this on YouTube to learn, to see how other people were doing it. Um, I'm a very visual learner, so I was able to see what people were doing and hear what they were doing, and then try and practice that and emulate that. That was in 2000, this is 2011, so nine years ago when all this started. And I would just do this as a hobby in the background. I would do my life, school, work, do all that stuff, and it lasted for about five years. I really wanted to DJ. I really wanted to like produce music and DJ and do all that stuff, which I do know a little bit about, but this we're just gonna talk about strictly DJing. Still had the controller, still had the computer, just playing around on it, and then one of my friends uh, worked for a wedding DJ company, and I was like, I like the DJ, so maybe I'll give it a shot. They were actually hiring, so I reached out to him. They got me a job there. And this is what I would recommend for you people. If you have zero experience professionally DJing and you just do it as a hobby, go get a job at another company to learn how it actually works. But also pay attention to whenever you work for companies, some of them have non-competes that will say you can't compete, you can't start up your own company, you can't, we can't just train you, you go out on your own for like two years or a year or something. So pay attention to that as well. That's actually what happened to me is I worked for this company and I started my own company two years later. And really I had no plans of doing that while I was working for their company, just kind of what happened. So yeah, I ended up getting this job at this wedding company. They were a franchise all over America, and they trained me on the ins and outs of the wedding industry. This way I could learn to talk to clients, I could learn to plan a wedding, I could take my passion for DJing and now use it in the industry for doing weddings, and it was great. It worked out well for me. Um, I just didn't enjoy working at this company. Some of it had to do with money, not making a lot of money, and some of it had to do with fear. I had a great fear of public speaking. And I think with, with the money and the fear of going to do these shows, I didn't feel like it was worth it. And I thought in my head like, DJing is not for me. This isn't what I like to do, um, or DJ weddings. Even though I had a great, I love music and I love DJing. At this time, I just was like, this is not for me because of the way I feel about it. So I ended up quitting that company after a year or two. And what happened for me, is in this whole time, like I continue to play music and, and make mixes for fun for myself just to listen to. Um, my, my friends knew I did this, so they would ask me to do like parties for them. So even though I quit that job and I gained all the information from them, friends were still asking me to do things. So I was able to keep DJing. And this is only looking back at it, so I was doing like you know, like one show every four months or six months or, you know, it wasn't a lot, but I was always doing it. It was like always there. So the next piece of real equipment that I ended up buying was the Pioneer DDJ SX2. I still have that controller. It's still what I use to DJ today. I love it. It's great. But for me, and then like what I did was I put it on a credit card and then I paid it off over a year. Um, that's just what I did. And then my friends, they kept asking me to do shows and I would always borrow equipment from my one DJ buddy. I would borrow speakers and lights. And then I would use my mixer and laptop and we'd go out and do these things. I wouldn't even have a microphone half the time. 
Um, so eventually after the show's picking up for friends, I ended up just like buying speakers, throw that on the credit card. I don't know how people start a business with at ground zero and just quit their day job and then just grow the business. Like for me, for how I've been doing it for the last three years, I still have a full-time job. I still, I DJ, but all that money, I don't take any money out of the business. I don't pay myself anything. All that money just goes right back into the business so that I can continue to grow it. Because my future goal is to have a bunch of DJs. Customers inquire into me. I have a team of DJs. I introduce the client to the DJ. They create the relationship and then walk them through the process and have a successful show. That's my, that's my vision. Right now, I'm in between working for a company and creating my own company and just doing friend gigs, acquiring equipment. And then eventually, when it gets to like, I'm doing a show a month, like that might be slow for some of you, but at this point in time, like that was awesome to do one thing a month. At this time is when then I started looking into creating a business. And what I did was I reserved the name. I went out and picked the name. I reserved that with the government and then that was my name and then I could start branding and making things about the company instead of myself. Um, and what I've learned, so from working with a company, which you'll learn this, is that how they advertise and market. You know, a lot of them, they go to bridal shows. Which, what, which websites do they advertise on? Eventually when I paid off all the bills, I was able to get ahead of myself. And then I was putting money back into like advertising and I was going to bridal shows. I was getting on the wedding wire, the knot to create a reputation and reviews for myself, which they have been a great way to get generate new clients. This business is all about referrals and reputation. And people need to know you. They need to see what past clients have thought about you. And that's a great way for people to see all that stuff about you. I started Red Tie Entertainment of like May 2017. So in April of 2017, we spent that first year before that, 2016, like doing one show every like three months or so. And what was going through my head is like contemplating, is this a real business? Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? Am I going to be able to make any money at it? And I had a lot of self doubt. And uh, actually in April, before I started the company, I had an idea to sell everything. I was just going to sell it all, everything I acquired, I was done. I was like, I'm not gonna make any money at this. I'm gonna go back to school, I'm gonna study finance, I'm gonna get to be a financial advisor, work a corporate job, I'm gonna make all this money doing that. And then what happened, I said I was gonna wait until May because I had a contract to do my last show and something happened to me that show of where, and it happened to me every time I did a show of, I love doing it. Like every time I DJ in front of people, it hit, I get this spark of excitement and enjoyment. I love playing music for people. I love music. I love interacting with people. Everything about DJing, I just love it. Um, and it was hard to get keep that spark going when you're doing shows so far apart from each other. So now this one, it sparked it again. Um, I started Red Tire Entertainment of May, that same month, 2017. Started making business cards, started making a website, contracts. I started doing all this stuff just to try and keep staying busy. Started getting into doing the bridal shows. If you have never done a bridal show, you got bridal shows in your area, just go to them. Um, what I did with my girlfriend, we just went and pretended like we were getting married. And it was like $5, so you can just get in, go talk to everybody, everyone's gonna give you papers and stuff. But you can just see how it works, see how it flows, how it's set up, the size of booths, um, how many, what your competition would look like, how to set up a bridal show booth, because um, all that's very really important. So I would do that and then I would plan all this stuff like, okay, we're gonna go do the bridal show in September. So the one in like February, we're gonna go and visit. And that's what we did. What wedding websites, you know, I tried the wedding wire and the knot. Cause it's really a lot about referrals and people just finding you. We're in a new age of people my age, I'm 29 and younger. Everybody's technologically savvy. So everyone's gonna be doing stuff on the internet. 
So a large portion of people come from the internet, but also there's people that want to interact with the DJ. And this is why it's good to do bridal shows, because you're a DJ, they're hiring you because of your personality. Anybody can have the equipment, it's the personality and the person that they want to be the DJ host of their wedding. So getting out there at bridal shows and showing them who you are, how you talk, how you present, is super important to people even nowadays with the internet being so large. So that first year, 2017, we had three weddings. That's when all the self-doubt was in. I did a lot of work of trying to build the brand, get it out there, advertising, letting friends know, all this stuff. The next year, we did, we did two bridal shows. Right, We got on the wedding wire, we got on the knot. We went from doing three weddings to 17 weddings. Huge, it was great. I'm, I have these thoughts in my head, oh, I need to hire people. I need to get all these people to come help me out. Looking back, if I would've hired somebody, I wouldn't have had enough work to do it, for them to do. <laughs> so uh, that brings us up, and I continue doing all this stuff. I continue um, expanding, making connections in the industry, um, meeting people, bridal shows, always doing bridal shows, internet, website, um, reviews. So that second year, we did 17 weddings, and now, um, this year, our third year, we have 28 weddings booked for 2020 and we have four booked for 2021. If you're an established company and you're doing 50 weddings, 100 weddings, this doesn't seem like anything, but I know you know what it's like when you're starting out and you finally like start getting weddings and you start making it and you feel like you've made it. and. Uh, and that's the way I feel right now. Um, Cause last year we had no weddings booked for 2020, um, all the way up to like September or like the fall. And now it's 2020 in the winter and we already have people booking out for next year. So next year is gonna be even busier. Um, what we're doing is now looking for people to hire, we're working with somebody right now to bring them in, train them, creating employee handbooks and doing all the minuscule stuff that a lot of people do and maybe you take for granted that other companies do that make companies great. So now in conclusion of this video and what you should take away from this as I am quarantined here on this whole coronavirus thing, it's a little crazy, but what you should do to start your business if you have zero experience, you love DJing, and you wanna get into the industry is go out and work for somebody else sacrifice your time and your pay just to learn the industry and learn what it's like and how to do it. So then when you do have that experience, you can use that money to acquire equipment and then when you wanna to decide to go out on your own, you go out on your own and when you're talking to your guests, now uh, they won't think like you're just some new person, you don't have any experience, you don't, they're not gonna, you're not gonna give them a good service for their wedding. Now you have some uh, background to back it up, some experience to back it up, and they will feel a lot more comfortable in doing that with you. So, work for somebody else, acquire some money, buy equipment, gain experience, and then when you're ready, go out on your own. And when you do go out on your own, that's when the advertising, marketing needs to come in. Facebook, oh, if you can't have a website, make a Facebook page, that's how I did it. Um, just to get a brand out there, get, they can review you on there. They, you, you can make a Google store, uh, Google business. Um, they can review you on there. And then when you make a website, it's important to look up SEO optimization so then you can optimize your page. So when they search thing in Google, you will come up in Google. Then you don't have to pay money um, for ads that you can get seen on Google. So that's a little bit about myself and some tips and tricks that I think you should take uh, to start your own business. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video.